What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Saturday, March 23rd, 2024, and I have an emergency alert to share with you guys right now. It is 1645 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major breaking news coming out of Russia. So, Putin gave a short five minute address to the Russian people today about the concert hall shooting. And what was very concerning about this address was that he basically blamed Ukraine and he kind of alluded to Western intelligence as being involved in this concert hall shooting. And the death toll is now over 150, okay? And it's expected to climb. So this is very, very concerning. And I told you guys that Russia would somehow find a way to blame Ukraine and blame Western intelligence. I told you guys that, and this is exactly what we're seeing. Earlier this morning, I released an update where I talked about what the Russian FSB said. The FSB said that the shooters were working with Ukraine and that they had help in Ukraine and that the Ukrainians were setting up an escape route for the gunmen and they were opening up a window so they could cross into Ukraine and that they had contacts in Ukraine. So you see where this is going, guys? It doesn't matter who did this, whether it was ISIS or whether it was a Russian false flag or whether it was Western intelligence, it does not matter. What matters is who they're going to blame. And it's clear that Putin is blaming Ukraine and Western intelligence for this. And so now the situation is going to escalate. And I'm very concerned that Putin could do something crazy like use WMDs in Ukraine, chemical weapons, nuclear weapons. He's already talked about creating a sanitary zone. Okay, we have the situation in Belgorod and inside of Russia, we have the rebels that are armed and funded by Ukraine. And they're fighting the Russian military inside of Russia. They're literally occupying towns inside of Russia, and the Russian military is now trying to shell them, and they're leveling entire villages. And the Russian military is literally leveling their own villages, trying to exterminate these Russian rebels that have been trained and armed by Ukraine, okay? So I think Putin is um, going to do something crazy very, very soon. I think we're going to see a massive escalation soon. In Ukraine, I think we're going to see a massive escalation with Europe. We have Belarus building up their forces on the border with Lithuania and Poland. And we have the situation in Asia escalating. We have the situation in the Middle East escalating. So get prepared, guys. Things are really getting crazy. But the death toll is now over 150. And Putin basically reiterated what the FSB said. He said that Ukraine prepared an escape route for the gunmen to cross into Ukraine. He also said that all four of the direct executors of the attack have been found. And he said that they tried to escape towards Ukraine, where according to preliminary data, a window for them to cross the border had been prepared by the Ukrainians. So this is very, very concerning. And he compared the attacks at the concert hall to public executions that the Nazis did in World War II to try to intimidate Russians. And he said that it was a bloody attempt to intimidate Russia and stir up chaos in Russia because Russia has a lot of ethnic groups. And he was alluding to the large Muslim population in Russia. And it's very interesting that he would compare this attack to what the Nazis did in World War II because he constantly calls Ukrainians Nazis, okay? So this is extremely concerning. This is very, very concerning, guys. He is basically blaming Ukraine for this, and he reiterated multiple times that Russia will punish not just the terrorists that carried out the attacks, but the people who were behind them who prepared and organized the attacks. So... Basically, he's saying, we think Ukraine did it. We're going to attack Ukraine. We know they did it. We think the Western intelligence was involved. 
And this is crazy because if any of you guys have ever played Call of Duty Modern Warfare, that's what happens in the video game Call of Duty Modern Warfare is that there's this big shooting in an airport perpetrated by uh, Russian nationalists. And they, they go into this airport and they shoot up the entire airport. And somehow uh, Russia blames America for that because there was an embedded CIA agent with those Russian nationalists. And basically Russia blames America for trying to cause a civil war and basically fueling the nationalists to try to overthrow the government. And then Russia launches a full-scale nuclear attack on the U.S. and Europe, and they try to invade uh, the U.S. and Europe, and that's basically the main uh, premise of the game, okay? And here we are, uh, you know, 15 years later, and it's happening, okay? So I don't know if this is predictive programming, but the parallels are very creepy. So I want to just play the part of his speech. It's very short. It's just five minutes or his address. Um, where he talks about the investigation and punishing the perpetrators. And he also says that Russia has put their uh, security forces on high alert across the country. So not only is he going to try to attack Ukraine in a new way now, but he's also going to have a state of martial law because they're going to have an excuse to lock everything down because we have to worry about terrorism now. So he's, it's going to benefit him twofold. He's going to be able to impose martial law, and he's going to also be able to escalate in a massive way against Ukraine and the West by saying that Ukraine and the West planned this out, and it was our fault, and it was Ukraine's fault, and the CIA was involved, and Ukraine was involved. So this is very, very serious, guys. This update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply has brought back their 25% discount on their three month emergency food supply. And to get the discount, you got to use the link preparewithnyprepper.com. And the link is in the description below this video. But this three month emergency food supply has a 25 year shelf life, it includes over 2,000 calories per day breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks, all contained within six rugged water-resistant buckets, and free shipping is included. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $200 off or 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply. The link is in the description below this video. Free shipping is included. They also have a general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running various discounts. And to get to their general store, you just gotta click on the My Patriot Supply logo when you get to preparewithnyprepper.com at the top of the page and you'll see their general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running discounts here. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply, and the link is in the description below this video. I declare March 24th a day of national mourning. In Moscow and the Moscow region, in all regions of the country, Additional anti-terrorist and anti-sabotage measures have been introduced. The main thing now is to prevent those behind this bloody massacre from committing new crimes. As for the investigation of this crime and the results of the operative search actions, at present we can say the following. All four direct executors of the terrorist attacks, all those who shot and killed people, have been found and detained. They tried to escape and were moving towards Ukraine, where, according to preliminary data, a window was prepared for them on the Ukrainian side to cross the state border. Wow. So let's play that again. Executors of the terrorist attacks. All those who shot and killed people have been found and detained. They tried to escape and were moving towards Ukraine where, according to preliminary data, a window was prepared for them on the Ukrainian side. To they tried to escape 
towards Ukraine, where according to preliminary data, a window was prepared for them on the Ukrainian side, basically saying that Ukraine cooperated with them and that this was organized by Ukraine and that these terrorists were just basically agents of Ukraine and Ukraine used these terrorists to spur a uh, civil war maybe in Russia or to cause chaos or to intimidate Russia. He's basically saying this was all Ukraine and that this was an attempt to intimidate Russia, to cause chaos, uh, especially because the shooters were Muslim and there's a lot of Muslims in Russia. So uh, basically an attempt to tear apart the Russian society by using the ethnic uh, tensions in Russia. So this this is, this is very, very serious. He's not saying all this directly, but you have to think deep, okay? You have to analyze critically. Then detained. They tried to escape and were moving towards Ukraine, where, according to preliminary data, a window was prepared for them on the Ukrainian side to cross the state border. A total of 11 people have been detained. The Russian Federal Security Service and other law enforcement agencies are working to uncover the entire auxiliary base of the terrorists, those who provided them with transportation, plotted ways of getting away from the crime scene, and prepared caches of weapons and ammunition. I repeat, the investigative and law enforcement... So he said that they had caches prepared ahead of time agencies will do everything possible to establish all the details of the crime but it is already obvious that we are faced not just with a carefully cynically planned terrorist attack but with a prepared and organized mass murder of peaceful defenseless people so he's basically saying it's obvious that this was not just a random terror attack that this was a well-planned and basically alluding to the fact that this was probably Ukraine and Western intelligence. Obvious that we are faced not just with a carefully, cynically planned terrorist attack, but with a prepared and organized mass murder of peaceful, defenseless people. The criminals were cold-bloodedly and purposefully going to kill, to shoot at point-blank range our citizens, our children. Like the Nazis who once committed massacres in the occupied territories, they plan to organize a show execution, a bloody act of intimidation. All the perpetrators, organizers, and customers of this crime will be justly and inevitably punished, whoever they are, whoever directed them. I repeat, we will identify and punish everyone behind the terrorists who prepared this atrocity, this attack on Russia, on our people. Okay, so he says, we will identify everybody who was behind the terrorists and punish them. Interesting that he would focus so much on who was behind the terrorists and not the terrorists themselves. I repeat, we will identify and punish everyone behind the terrorists who prepared this atrocity this attack on Russia, on our people. We know what the threat of terrorism is. We count here on cooperation with all states that sincerely share our pain and are ready to unite in practice. So this is very, very serious, guys. Um, I'm very, very concerned. I think we're going to see a massive escalation soon. And Maria Zakharova, the foreign ministry spokesman, blamed Ukraine on her telegram and said, now we know in which country these bloody bastards planned to hide from pursuit, Ukraine. And a senior Russian lawmaker, Andrei Kartopolov, said that if Ukraine was involved, then Russia must deliver a worthy, clear and concrete reply on the battlefield. And Margarita Simonian owner of RT Russia Today and Sputnik's parent media group said, we already know the names of the perpetrators. We have already seen their faces. And it immediately becomes obvious why American media shouted in unison that this was ISIS yesterday, because this is not ISIS. It's just that the actors were selected in such a way that they could convince the stupid part of the global community that it was ISIS. 
these are Ukrainians. And the fact that just yesterday, even before the arrests, even before the names of the perpetrators were found, Western intelligence services began to convince the world that it was ISIS. That's what gave them away. This is not ISIS. This is a well-coordinated team of several other also widely known abbreviations, okay? So she's saying it was Western intelligence alphabet agencies that used ISIS to attack Russia in this attack to try to intimidate Russia, to uh, try to cause maybe a civil war or something. Um, but that's what Margarita Simonian, she's very close with Putin, okay? She's one of Putin's uh, close friends. He, she's in his inner circle. All right. So, um, if she's saying that we know that's what Putin is thinking and you could tell based on what he was saying here, that that's basically what he's thinking, that it was Ukraine, 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 and we must punish them. So this is insane guys. And the Polish prime minister, Donald Tusk said that the attacks in Moscow must not become a pretext for increased violence and aggression. And Russian police have apparently cut the ear off of a suspect in this investigation and made him eat it on camera. And they posted it on Telegram. And here we have a video showing one of the suspects. And this was taken by Russian police. And apparently this guy is a Ukrainian citizen. And he served in the Ukrainian armed forces. That's what Russian sources are saying. They have this. A uh, passport, a Ukrainian passport, and it says he's from Ukraine. His nationality is from Ukraine, and they're saying that this is the guy on this passport. This is one of the shooters. Okay, this guy right here. They're saying that this guy has Ukrainian citizenship, and then they also said that he served in the Ukrainian armed forces for many, many years. And then they provide this uh, history of his service going back all the way to the year 2000 with the Ukrainian armed forces, okay? And the U.S. has put out a new travel warning saying that as events unfold, we urge U.S. citizens in Moscow to avoid the area and follow instructions of local security personnel. So this is extremely serious, guys. And Dmitry Medvedev said yesterday in so many words that this was most likely Ukraine and that it was not ISIS. So we know where this is going, guys, okay? This is going to cause a massive escalation, so get prepared. And the U.S. has approved a quarter of a billion dollars in military aid for the Baltic countries. The money will be used to develop military infrastructure and security in Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Isn't it interesting that the U.S. is giving a quarter of a billion dollars now to the Baltic countries for military aid? right around the same time that Belarus is building up forces on their border, okay? And just two months ago, or maybe it was three months ago now, uh, Estonia said they were going to build 600 bunkers along their border with Russia, and the Baltic countries and Finland and even Poland announced that they're going to work to build a giant defense line along their borders with Russia and Belarus. So something's brewing over there, guys. Something is brewing. I think the Baltics are going to be attacked soon. I think it's going to happen this year, okay? And the Lithuanian government said Russia is returning to a Cold War situation and Europe must be prepared. Russia plans to increase its forces along its borders with NATO. If Ukraine loses significant new territories to Russia, Europe will need to act quickly. And this is echoing what multiple leaders in Europe have been saying about a possible attack by Russia. We know that Sweden has told its citizens to prepare uh, 90 days worth of food and medicine in the event that Russia would attack, which they said could happen this year. The Polish president told CNBC that he believes that Russia will attack NATO in less than two years. He said by 2026. And we also had the Institute for the Study of War, a very conservative, not politically conservative, but uh, basically conservative as far as reporting information, say that Russia is preparing for a long-term conflict with NATO. So this is very, very concerning, guys. I'm telling you, 
Things are going to really escalate very, very soon. We also had the Russian defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, say the other day that they're going to create two new ground armies this year in Russia with 16 brigades and 14 divisions. That is just absolutely insane. And many experts say that that could amount to three quarters of a million troops. Okay, that's a massive amount of troops, guys. And drones attacked a metallurgical plant in Russia. So Ukraine is continuing to strike deep into Russian territory. Last night, they struck an oil refinery 1,200 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. And the Houthis struck another ship in the Red Sea today. The UK Office of Maritime Trade Operations reported that an unnamed commercial vessel in the Red Sea was struck by an unknown projectile earlier this morning, roughly 23 nautical miles off the coast of western Yemen, with the impact claimed to have caused a large fire, which has since been extinguished. So we have to worry about the Houthis still. We have to worry about Hezbollah. We have to worry about the Middle East situation. Israel's going to be going into Rafah. Soon, I think after Ramadan ends, we're going to see Israel go into Rafah. I think Israel is trying to be nice and not do any major operations during Ramadan. So for all the people out there that bash Israel and say Israel doesn't care about the people, well, if they didn't care, they could have continued their operation during Ramadan, which would actually benefit them because Everybody would be praying and it would be easier for them to conduct military operations while people are praying, wouldn't it? But no, they decided to wait until Ramadan is over. Okay, so Israel does care about, you know, civilians. Okay, but the situation in the Middle East is going to kick off at the same time as the situation in Ukraine because Russia's waiting for the ground to dry up in Ukraine and in Eastern Europe before they make their moves. And same thing with Belarus. If Belarus is going to attack Poland and Lithuania, they're waiting for the ground to dry. Belarus has already moved several artillery regiments, missile defense systems, and mechanized brigades to the border of Lithuania and Poland. Okay. Within just a few miles of the border of Lithuania, they've moved a mechanized brigade with hundreds of tanks and armored vehicles, and they've put that brigade on wartime status, and they've even drafted thousands of people to join that brigade to bring it up to the wartime status. And then they also moved several artillery regiments to within a few miles of the Polish border. They've extended a no-fly zone in southern Belarus through the end of June, and they're undergoing combat readiness training right now across the entire country in Belarus. And The military is on combat alert. So it's going to kick off, guys. I think we're going to see a massive attack in Ukraine. Russia is going to send a huge force to try to break through the front lines. But we could also see Putin do some kind of WMD attack or some kind of hybrid attack. And maybe he's going to create that sanitary zone because of the situation going on in Belgorod with the Russian rebels. Maybe he's going to drop chemical weapons on Kharkiv, or maybe he's going to surround Kharkiv with troops and create a siege. I don't know. But he said many times that they're going to have to create a sanitary zone so Ukraine can't launch weapons into neighboring areas of Russia. Okay, so I don't know what the sanitary zone means, but it sounds like WMDs, chemical weapons, nuclear weapons, or maybe melting down the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which has been rigged with explosives by the Russian troops there. Okay, or maybe they're going to take out the Dnipro Dam, which is something they tried to do the other day in that big missile strike. Okay, that dam is just 20 miles north of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, the largest power plant in Europe with six reactors. If they hit that dam again with even just two or three more missiles, that whole dam is going to break and it's going to flood all of that area where Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is, and there's going to be a meltdown. They could do something like that. There's all different things that Putin can do now. But the big thing is that he's now blaming this civilian attack on Ukraine and that Ukraine was involved and Western intelligence was involved. All the high profile figures in Russia are blaming Ukraine and Western intelligence. Margarita Simonian, uh, Medvedev, 
Maria Zakharova. These are all people that are in Putin's inner circle. Okay, and Putin said himself that the initial investigation points to the Ukrainians having prepared a window for the gunmen to cross into Ukraine. So this is very, very serious, guys. Okay, I am very, very concerned. So we're going to have the Middle East kicking off with the Rafah operation, and then eventually Israel's going to go after Hezbollah. We're going to have Russia attacking Ukraine with potentially WMDs or maybe just a massive conventional attack with a huge ground army potentially to try to reach Kiev and Odessa. And Western countries are now talking about sending troops if Russia tries to go for the capital again or go for Odessa or they make any significant uh, strategic gains in Ukraine. I'm not talking about little tactical gains, you know, taking Bakhmut or something or some little town nobody knows about. But if Russia makes strategic gains in Ukraine, like taking back Kharkiv or making a massive uh, push towards the capital of Ukraine, the West has said they're going to send troops. Okay, Macron, the president of France, said multiple times that we will send troops. Okay, we're not going to allow Russia to take Kiev and Odessa because if they take one or two of those cities, basically Ukraine is going to collapse as a country. If they get cut off from the Black Sea or if their capital gets taken, th th their country is basically done for. Okay, and so NATO is preparing for that. So it's all going to kick off in the coming weeks, guys. Okay, so please make your final preparations now. Make sure you have your bug out bags ready. Make sure you have a nuclear war survival plan. We talked about this last night in my live stream, what to do if you live in a city. If there's a nuclear detonation, you need to have a place where you can shelter from the blast. And then you also need a place where you can shelter from the fallout. Okay. Now, depending on whether or not you get a warning, you're going to have potentially 15 to 30 minutes to prepare for the blast and the thermal effects. And then the fallout is going to come later, okay, maybe an hour to five or six hours after the detonation. So you're going to have time to prepare for the fallout, but the blast and the thermal radiation, the heat, you're going to have to prepare for immediately. Okay, so you have to think about these things. Okay, do you live near a nuclear war target? Do you work near a nuclear war target? Are you downwind of a nuclear war target? What are the prevailing winds in your area? You need to think about these things and have a plan. Do you have a fallout shelter? Do you have a place to go if you're at work and you get a notification on your phone that Russia launched missiles and they're going to hit your city in 15 minutes and you're in the middle of of uh, an office building 15 stories up, what are you going to do? How are you going to take shelter? How are you going to protect yourself from the blast wave? Okay, the blast wave is going to come through with a force as strong as a tornado or a category five hurricane. Okay, 500 mile an hour wind is basically what the blast wave is going to be like. So it's going to carry debris and shrapnel, it's going to collapse buildings. You need to have a place to hide to protect yourself from the blast. And then after the blast, you need a shelter for fallout, okay? The best place to go if you're in a city is to go underground in a metro station or subway tunnels. That's gonna be the safest place to be if you're in a place like New York City. Just go straight down your building to the nearest subway tunnel and stay there. That's gonna be your best bet, okay? But check out my nuclear war survival videos. I've done a lot of them talking about all of this in great detail. Check out my website, newyorkprepper.com. I have free reference articles on nuclear war survival. I have Canadian nuclear war targets, European nuclear war targets, American nuclear war targets. I have all kinds of uh, radiation references and cheat sheets. So check it out, newyorkprepper.com, free of charge. And I will be back potentially later tonight. If there's more news, I'll do another update. Otherwise, I'll do an update tomorrow. So until the next time, take care. God bless. And don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere. Guys, the world is getting crazier by the day. We're on the verge of World War III. The U.S. is drowning in trillions of dollars in debt. 
Inflation is at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. So you need to prepare your finances for the future with precious metals. Precious metals are a great way to protect your hard-earned savings and retirement against inflation and the uncertainty of the stock market. Also, precious metals are good to have for the purposes of preparedness to be able to barter with people for essential supplies if the grid goes down. Every prepper should have at least a small amount of silver coins. The company I trust for my precious metals is Midas Gold Group. Text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information on precious metals. Midas Gold Group is 100% veteran owned and supports veterans through the Wounded Warrior Project. Midas Gold Group will work with you to convert part of your retirement savings into gold or to set up a gold IRA. And unlike many precious metals dealers, Midas Gold Group offers precious metals in small denominations, which is great for preparedness, so you have something tangible to use for bartering when the grid goes down. Precious metals have continuously risen in price over the past 100 years and are considered a safe investment. So text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information and to get started today.